Good Friday morning, everyone. Made it to the end of another week. And we've got another edition of Pass Rush Friday to get through. And if you watched the game Monday night, you already know where this is headed. You already know what this is going to look like. Yeah, we, uh, we got real problems on the Pass Rush front, people. 11 games in, I, I don't know what can be said about this Pass Rush other than there has to be something systemically wrong with the way this team is playing on defense. We have assembled a reasonable collection of talent at getting to the quarterback, veterans, newbies, players in the middle of their journeyman career, all, all different kinds of players. And with one exception, none of them are getting to the quarterback at an exceptionally successful rate. And also being efficient by getting the by having a lot of those pressures result in actually positive things. So I I don't know. I don't know what to say about it anymore, except clearly we're doing something wrong on that side of the football. So let's go through the damage here. Starting with the defensive ends. Carlos Dunlap basically doesn't play. He he shouldn't play anymore, by the way. He should get zero snaps the rest of the season. He is beyond worthless out there right now. Zero pressures and four snaps. Alton Robinson also got credited with zero pressures, which <clears throat> I have to admit, I don't know if I totally agree with that assessment from PFR. You had that one play where Alton had what looked like a strip sack, except the pass got completed. To me, that's a QB pressure. Right? I mean, how is that not a QB pressure? He hit the quarterback as he was throwing the ball, and the ball just happened to flutter to the running back. Like, I don't know. To me, that's a QB pressure, but whatever. Didn't count on PFR's stat sheet. Uh, Benson Mayoa did not have any. Spent a lot of time in coverage, so what do you expect? Kerry Hyder was credited with one uh, QB pressure. So he, he's doing all right this year. He's one of the guys I can single out as at least being passable. He's averaging about one QB pressure a game, which is fine for a big end. Rasheem Green added another QB pressure to his tally. He he actually had a pretty good game. I'm I'm pretty sour on Rasheem Green at this point because it it's just very obvious to me he won't be here next year. I don't I don't see what the point is of playing him all these snaps, but he has legitimately played pretty well the last uh, three games. He has five QB pressures. He had the return on the PAT. And I think he might have gotten screwed out of another pressure by a dubious roughing the passer call. So I'm, I'm not sure how PFR counts that. But regardless, he's up to 14 on the season, which is more than I thought he was going to have. Okay, defensive tackles are next. And a little bit of interesting news here. First of all, Puna Ford got on the board. He added a QB pressure. He's up to double digits now in the season. So he will probably exceed his career high and get to around... Uh, maybe 16 QB pressures this year, one a game, which is adequate for a one tech, but not what we were hoping for at all this year when we moved him to three tech. Al Woods did not have any QB pressures, but he's already more than exceeded expectations. LJ Collier <clears throat> somehow managed to lead the team in QB pressures. He had two and PFF gave him three, actually. PFR only gave him the two, but PFF gave him three and he still didn't have a good game. PFF gave him three pressures and still gave him a pretty bad grade for the game. So LJ Collier is breaking down barriers right now, people. He can be by far the most effective pass rusher on the team in limited snaps and still have, according to PFF, a bad game. But regardless, he had two QB pressures, his best game of the season on that front. And he's got a lot of work to do if he wants to get to his season projection. Brian Monet, no pressures. Kim Dietschy did not play. So the ends combined for two and the defensive tackles combined for three. Yeah, <clears throat> not good. Not good at all. Okay, linebacker, this is going to be quick. Bobby Wagner, no. Jordan Brooks, no. Daryl Taylor did add one. So Daryl Taylor got a QB pressure. It was also a sack, by the way. Um, I don't think Taylor had his best game. I think he overran a couple of plays. I think he gets pushed around a little bit, especially in the run. So, Daryl Taylor, I, I, I want to see better stuff from him going forward, but it was good to see him get back in the sack column. And at the end of the day, he's the only guy on this defense who is even coming close to an adequate amount of effective QB pressure. So, 
He's at 13, which he's well on pace to exceed my expectations. By the way, I think the rookie record for a Seahawk is three sacks. I'm sorry, eight sacks in a rookie season. So he's three off that. I'm pretty sure Bruce Irvin has the record. I could be wrong, but Taylor has a shot. If you count this as a rookie season, which, well, that's debatable. <clears throat> okay, cornerback next. And this is a similarly sparse category. Um, nothing from the starting outside corners. But Ugo Amadi did add one QB pressure. So um, he's up to three on the season. I thought Marquise Blair was going to be our blitzing nickel corner, but Ugo has filled that role this year since Blair went down. Actually done it reasonably well. He's got three QB pressures on the season now, but um, it, it's it's nothing to make me feel like he belongs here long term. I'm, I'm, I, I don't know what to make of Amadi right now, but I'm not overly impressed. And that leaves safety, and this is going to be quick too. Jamal Adams had one QB pressure, so um, he's he's uh, he's got some work to do too. But uh, he he is starting to play add on a little bit here. He has been actually effectively disrupting the quarterback the last month plus. And Quandre Diggs, no QB pressures. I don't know if Quandre Diggs has blitzed more than twice this season, so whatever. So that gets us to a grand total of eight, eight. The um, Washington football team was missing two of their starting offensive linemen, by the way. It, it feels like I should bring that up here. They had 84 offensive snaps. Feels like that's worth bringing up here. Yeah, so by the end of this season, the Seattle Seahawks may very well set a record for number of defensive snaps played in a season. I don't know if they will. I, I don't know where I could even look that up, but... It seems to me very believable. They are setting the records you don't want. And despite that massive number of snaps, they are probably not going to get to the 200 uh, QB pressures that I set as a goal before this season. If I knew we were going to play this many defensive snaps, I probably would have set it more like 230, 240. But we're not even going to get to 200. So that that's how the season's going. That's how things are going right now with this team. And me and uh, Hawks Nest talk about this sometimes in our streams, about how our defensive linemen are taught to play the run first and then play the pass, and we are the only team in the NFL that does it that way. I think very clearly that strategical decision is starting to really hit us hard. I, I think it's become very clear that whatever you might think of certain players that we have, like like maybe Dunlap is just washed up. Maybe Alton Robinson isn't what I thought he was. Maybe, 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 maybe. It seems to me that a collection of pass rushing talent like what we have here, even if it's not great, should not be down with the worst teams in the league. And they are. So it seems to me we got to get off that. And unfortunately, in order to get off that, you got to get some of these coaches out of here. We all know where that particular mandate comes from, I think. We all know that it's Carroll. So, these are why, this is why I say Carroll needs to get out of here. This doesn't work anymore. The game has changed or, or something where, where that doesn't fly anymore. You got to play the pass first. That's what every other team is doing, except us. Every other team does it, apparently. We're the only team that plays it that way. So these results are more than enough for me to conclude that we need to do something different. And that's going to require new coaches. All right. See you guys later. Peace out. Go Hawks.